morning, everybody. Hi, Courtney. Good morning, Miracle. Hi, Margie. Hi, Misha. Hi, Christy. I love it. <laughs> the OGs. This is the crew. I love it. I'm That's right. so happy. Ah, Christy's like, show the move, show the move. <laughs> Misha made it. Hello. I love it. Um, so good. Well, one, isn't that, it's always shocking to me, you know, we, because in the grand scheme of things, uh, I think I've talked about Michael Singer before. He has a couple incredible books, but they're kind of like mind blowing. So if you're not like ready for them, you're not ready for them, but they're fabulous. And his whole thing to like bring levity to a situation or a little perspective really is like, we're a speck of dust on a speck of dust spinning like a billion miles per hour out in the middle of nowhere with other specks of dust. And then, and then it's, and then it's nothing. Like if you just keep looking out, 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 how big our lives feel and how dramatic shit can feel and how heavy things can feel. And it's like, oh my God, it's so temporary and it doesn't even mean anything. Like we're just, we're on a, on a ball spinning in the middle of the atmosphere. Like, what does that even mean? And how, and we're just one little, we're just one of the things on this little thing, you know, but on the other hand, this is all we know, right? Like this is the journey that we're on right now. So we don't, you know, yes, we can imagine having that perspective and kind of zoom out for our own sanity. But the truth is, in the day-to-day -day life, in this little journey that we're on for however long it is, we do make a difference, you know? And I think that that's kind of the duality of it that we have to live with. And, and the fact that his daughter is shocked at all, like you're saying, totally like dumbfounds me because, and I, there was a beautiful, oh God, what was his name? He's a character actor. Did you ever see the movie um, Home for the Holidays with Holly Hunter? And Robert Downey Jr. He was no. the the heavy the heavy set dad who's been around forever. Charles something. I, Charles Durning. Oh, Charles Durning. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, so good, heartbreaking actor. And like, right, it's I, I'm gonna bum myself out telling this story, but I read an interview he did like right before he died, and he was like, I don't know, I think people enjoy my work. I'm really not sure. Like he like even at fucking 80 working forever. He was still super doubtful of his ability, of the impression he was making on people. And there's some little girl like me who's just been like idolizing him for 25 years, you know? And like, I'm fully inspired by this human. And I don't know, I just, I think it's, you know, we're, we're living um, in such a precious moment in our individual and collective histories right now where we really have the opportunity to, you know, <laughs> I've just, I've been really weepy the last couple of days. And I think I'm just, I've pivoted into this like immense state of gratitude. Like every day that we get to get up, it's just, it's like, wow, there's so many people not waking up today. There's so many people that, that don't have a computer. There's so many people that don't have a community. There's so many people that, that, that for whatever reason, don't feel secure enough to, to share their gifts with the world, to even go after them or to, you know what I mean? And, and, and so I think, I think we have this moment and this opportunity to really express to those that we care about, like, let's make sure they know, you know, let's make sure they really, really know. And, and like, I know that that's pretty much a guarantee for me. Cause I kind of love aggressively like, the way I go after all parts of life is kind of like all in. So they know if you're in my life, like, you know, how I feel about you. Um, but a lot of people like, that's a very vulnerable, scary kind of thing. And I just think, let's go, man. Like, really, what are we waiting for? Because even if they don't, even if they don't reciprocate it, who cares? Because my feelings are my feelings. Your feelings are your feelings. That's fine. There's room for all of it. So it's like, if I want to express that to you, that's not going to do anything to you. You know, we're all responsible for how we re react and respond to things. So it's like, let's just like we were doing last week, you know, being that light and being the love and being this big flashlight and, and just, if you have gifts and you want to give them or use them, or, you know, I know Diana, she and I have been conversing about how she's like working on some songs that she wants to start singing again. And I, and I just think it's so extraordinary and like, why not? If you like to sing, sing. If you like to move, move. If you like to color, color. If you like to play hopscotch, go play hopscotch. I don't know. And if you have a crush on somebody or 
a family member that you're like, maybe we can bury this BS. Like maybe we can just let it all go and live in the past and who cares and everyone's different now. And let's just start and meet each other where we are now, you know, and then, and then go forward. So I don't know. I, it's just interesting. It always makes me sad when people don't hear it and they don't see it and they may not, and that's their journey, but we on our side of things can, can make sure that if, if we have the other, another opportunity in this day, like let them know, you know, you really reach out to a fan, uh, someone you're a fan of online, you know, that's like a super funky, weird, gray, sometimes yucky, sometimes awesome thing. Right. But like, it always feels good. And I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, you know, because I, I was lucky enough to be on a show for a couple of years and there are people that still tell me that they dig it, that they love my part. They love the show. And it, it always warms my heart that, that in someone's life across the country who I've never physically met, like I made a difference or at least distracted them or made them happy or something. Dollhouse. I know Misha, I wasn't going to call you out. <laughs> Yes, Misha. Um, you know, but guess what? Now she's on this call and she meditates with us twice a week. You know what I mean? Who knew? Who knew that me being on a television show would get people to meditate? Because I swear to God that has happened. I did an Instagram live last year and some guy was just like, oh, what's Miracle up to? You know? And and then he private and I just went into a live meditation. And he messaged me privately afterwards. He goes, I didn't know what I was getting into. I've never meditated before. I don't even know if I did it right. He goes, but I just laid down on my floor and I just listened to you. And he goes, I've never felt more calm in my life. And just thank you so much for that. Like, but he would have never considered meditating if some kooky actress was like, we're meditating now, you know? I mean, you don't know. Inspiration can come from all different kinds of places. You're right. Um, so, there's my little tangent for this morning. Hi, Denise, by the way, you came in late. Hi, Diana and Melena, we got both. Um, so if anyone, uh, if that, any of that resonates with anyone and you wanna share anything, flag us down or unmute yourself or put it in the chat. I mean, it's normal now, right? <laughs> at least for a little bit. I mean, that's where it's at, but you're right. And there, and there is, you know, on that point, something to be said for everything we're going through of, it's an experience, you know, it's all an experience. It's all, you know, and, and again, we decide if it's good or bad or weird or whatever. Hi, Britt. Um, you know, so it's, I think that's a really good attitude, Courtney, of just like taking it in for what it is, you know, and you don't have to decide anything about it. You can just be like, wow, this is happening, <laughs> you know, like, wow, okay. I, well, I'll see how I feel about this later or whatever. Um, Jeremy commented, Robin Williams. Oh, I know. I haven't got my break at it because he was diagnosed with COVID and yet he still makes some people laugh. You have to try, Jeremy, right? You've made me laugh. <laughs> I, you know, and I, I think, I think it's beautiful. You know, I think it's beautiful to acknowledge these diagnoses, I don't, you know, I have, I have a lot of mixed thoughts about it. And I talked to my therapist about it too, because, you know, way back in the day, there weren't names for what a lot of us experience, right? Um, it was like crazy or, you know, she's on the, <laughs> just, you know, I'm not going to go there, <laughs> but there were like names for everything. Okay. And they were not nice. And it was like very like clumping together and just kind of, that's weird. I don't know what to do with that. And then we learned some things about the human brain, about the human condition, the human experience, hysteria. Thank you, Diana. That's, that's, that's a nice way to say one of the things I was going to say, but it's not nice. You know, nerves. Yeah. Nerves, right. Oh, she's, she's hysterical. That's a, I mean, we're going to go down a whole different path. I'm not going to do that, but <clears throat> it's like, what if we're just all human beings? And if you look at, if you look at nature, there's all different kinds of everything, right? And there are different dynamics with different species and different parts of the world and different, you know, the needs change. And there's no way that <clears throat> there's gonna be like one of everything in our species as well. And just because some group of people deem it as different or weak or it's a limitation, you know, I don't know that that's true. You know, some of us can, can take these these things that maybe 
Because the thing is, don't we all feel a little separate? Didn't we all feel a little isolated and different and weird like before the pandemic? For just, if I'm being straight with you, I've always felt alone. I've always felt like I never fit in anywhere. I still feel that way, to be straight with you. And <clears throat> I think you can find people, we're like all Venn diagrams. <laughs> it's like, I'm my own crazy cookie little fun bubble. And then you're your little bubble. And then sometimes we cross over and we have a really good time, you know? And then maybe we separate again and that's okay. Uh, Jeremy says right here, Diana says me too. So I think, you know, let's take this opportunity of aloneness and separateness and realize like, well, if everybody feels that way, then maybe nothing's wrong with any of us. And this is just the experience and yeah, normal bubble. I know Jeremy, me too. And you know, and, and, it's, and it's not helpful that like in our youth, it's this upbringing of cliques and little mini communities within the community. Like, it's just not helpful. Um, oh yeah, thanks Misha. See, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. It's not just you, it's not just me. Everyone feels this way, so we're all fine. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Everybody's great. Everybody has some kind of funkiness, everybody has some kind of thing. And, and this click thing, this popularity thing, this, you know, it's all an illusion. And none of it's real, none of it's real. I think, I think maybe there are groups of people that, because I think you can find your tribe, right? Like, I think, I think you can find enough people that Venn diagram with you <laughs> where there's like, a, you all Venn diagram it different and then you make like a cool pattern or something. But, but everyone's still in their own world. Everyone's still having their own individual experience. And so I think that when we feel like an outsider, and we look at other groups of people. I'm like, well, they're all normal. They all get along with that whole group. Look how cute they are. They all have BMWs. They're all blonde, like whatever. And you know, that makes a lot of sense to them. And they all like gravitate towards each other. And it doesn't have to mean anything. Like all they're doing is seeing what feels safe and familiar to them. And that can become super dangerous, obviously, right? But it's, it's a natural thing that we all do and we're all searching because even if it looks like there's a group of people that make sense together, I guarantee every single one of them still feels alone. And they still feel like not fully <laughs> free or maybe not fully them. And, and maybe as we get older, the opportunity here is to settle more and more and more into ourselves, to settle more and more and more into like whatever kind of groovy little funky weirdo freak whatever you know and it doesn't have to be negative i mean lady gaga has created an entire career and has a whole following like pause up freaks right because like everybody feels that way and she's not wrong you know and she's an, she's an incredible artist and she had to she literally carved her own way she wanted to be an actor nobody would hire her she's like so fine i'll just be a singer then whatever you know and she's just like Happened to become, like, it's easy to become a pop star. I don't even know how that happened. That's like her journey, but you know, she did it. And then she got to like pivot once people took her seriously there. And then she got to be the thing she always wanted to be, which is an actor. But I think, I think that's the point is like, we just got to keep doing us and trust the people that we're meant to serve will find us. Trust that the people we're meant to create families with will gravitate towards each other. Communities will find, we find each other. And I think we have to let go of, so what, what, I was diagnosed with this. So what, I can't get out of bed because I have this chronic illness. So what, I lost my job. So what, so what, so what? What if, what if, what if you have these things because you're meant to do something else? We're only pissed because we think we're supposed to look like something. We're only disappointed because we think we were supposed to have a certain path. But like, we're just humans and we don't know anything, guys. Again, speck of dust, on a speck of dust, spinning in the middle of nowhere, and it's gonna be over in about five seconds. So like, let's not take it so seriously. You know, we can, we can, we can rise up, know that you know nothing. That's right, Jeremy. You can rise up, get a little perspective, don't take it so seriously, and be like, what's in front of me? What's in front of me today? What do I got? What do I have to work with? I saw another interview with a guy that has no arms and no legs and he's a motivational speaker and has like done more shit than I've ever done, quite frankly, <laughs> you know, as far as like living life. And 
so there you go. Like, it's just, and, and again, it's not to be compared. It's just releasing, like, let it go, right? Just release, 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 release the shoulds, release the expectations, release whatever you think this was supposed to be. Open your eyes for realsies. Look in front of you. What do I have? I have a community that I get to talk about real stuff with twice a week. I can, I can tap dance later today if I want to. I get to talk to a real life doctor about what's going on right now at three o'clock. Right, Diana? Is that when you're coming on? <laughs> she froze. Two, two p.m. <laughs> two, two o'clock. Okay. Um, you know, I get to journal today. I get to meditate today. I get to go outside for a walk. I have to wear a mask. Oh, well. Oh, well. It's, it's actually not going to harm you. Cloth, it's fine. Bandana, figure it out, right? Wear your glasses, calm down, and just go for a walk, you know? And if you can't go for a walk, open your window. The sky is blue, and there are clouds outside, and you probably have a tree nearby, and that's pretty magical, right? If you don't have a favorite chair in your apartment, I suggest investing in a favorite chair. I'm not kidding. One of my favorite places in the world, Brittany's like, uh-huh. <laughs> One of my favorite places in the world is my favorite chair looking out my front window at our beautiful tree and the sky. My computer chair is my favorite chair. That's right, Jeremy. There's something about it. And it's the small, it's, it really is the small stuff. It's these little, little moments because that's all we get anyway. So find a favorite chair, look outside. I say, when in doubt, make your bed, open a window. <laughs> Look at Misha's bed. Gorgeous. So clean. I bet her house is spotless. <laughs> you know, like, what can I do? What is right in front of me? Who can I call? Go through your phone. You know, it's okay, Diana. Um, you know, I miss so-and-so. Well, call them. Call them. Shoot them a text. Send them a funny video of yourself. Have a dance party. I had a dance party yesterday with just me, and it was fantastic. Christy did too. I'm telling you guys. I got a new jam for you too. And I can't believe I'm going to say this, but maybe I'm a Jonas Brothers fan now. It was on the voice finale and it's called X by the Jonas Brothers. And it is like a super hot, like summer, like, like Spanish flair. I don't know. I could not sit still. It's so fun. And it's just like poppy bubblegum, whatever, but it's awesome. So have a little dance party. You know what I'm saying? Look at what's in front of you. Do what you can do. And use all, all the other stuff that, you, that other people think is limitations. Plug into that and it's your superpower, right? Like plug into that, accept it, roll with it, see what happens, learn how to combat it if it, if it feels like it's against you, you know? Strengthen the other part, strengthen that piece, strengthen that perspective. My bed is my favorite chair, <laughs> but I do have a window next to it, nice. <laughs> um, yeah, so there you go, guys. That's that's, that's how I feel about all that today. Um, Christy dug it. I got the smiles. Yeah. Maybe we should do a playlist. We'll like collect some songs. That's beautiful, Diana. And I agree a thousand percent. And thank you for saying like the natural disaster thing. That's like, it, it, I think that helps me put it in perspective of like, like I knew it, like nobody did this, right? Ish. <laughs> I think we could have prevented we could have been proactive, but like this was coming in some form or another too. And even if it didn't make it onto our soil, which is like, what are the odds of that? You know, it's the, our brothers and sisters around the world. Like it's, it's collectively happening to us as a species. So that's a really beautiful. You also made me think um, of the word acceptance, which I try to drill in as often as I can, right? Accepting, being accepting of the moment, accepting of the reality that we're in, accepting of our own circumstances, because from that place we can take action. You know, we can find peace. We suffer because we resist, right? Mm -hmm. Like pain is, pain is a guaranteed part of life, period. How much we choose to suffer is up to us. Because the pain happens, the thing happens to us, and then we go, okay. And then we gently move through it. We take our time. We do what we got to do. We accept where we're at. And then we can keep going forward. We grow from it. We expand from it. Our perspective changes. Our abilities change. You know, everything's expanding and contracting, ebbing and flowing. Um, so from this, when we resist though, and we're like, but I don't want it to be this way. Like we're making ourselves nuts. That's the choice. Yeah. That's just a choice, you know? And that's where the suffering gets a little heightened more than it needs to be. Um, but you, you help me see a little bit, Diana, um, I think on what Christy and Jeremy and, and Biddy and Courtney were kind of touching on, 
with this identity thing, it's so interesting. And I know Christy has been like, you know, my little uh, shining, you know, work on yourself star. <laughs> I've been enjoying watching your journey because it's, because you saw it immediately. You saw it, you said it like day, like week one, Christy was like, it's time for me now. Like I've just been about everybody else forever and it's my time. And like, you saw it for what it was and you, and you leaned into it. And yeah, you're going to have days when you're like, uh, no, <laughs> and that's okay, you know? because you keep coming back to it and you see it for what it is. But you made me think you guys, what if for those of you that are used to serving and used to being about other people, right? And that, that rhythm and your identity in that, what if you're still serving in this moment, even if you're not with other people? Like what if you're serving the bigger picture right now, right? Like by staying home, we're protecting each other, right? Is, is the concept by wearing the max, okay. So by staying home, you're still being of service. You're serving those people that you normally hand costumes to and quick changes and what can I get and lunch and whatever the hell you guys do, right? Whatever that service energy is, you're still serving them by not being around them and being part of the noise and the problem right now. Or, and or you're serving yourself right now. You know, you're, you're, you're serving you, you're filling your well so, so when we re-enter in this new version of our reality, you're even brighter, you're even bigger, you're even, like you're, you're more capable, right? You're ready, like on a different level. Um, I don't know, I don't know if that makes sense. I just, I, I kind of just saw like everyone doing a collective pivot. And <laughs> it's like, we didn't stop doing these things. We, and, and of course, it's not a bad idea to, to explore like, who am I if I'm not my job? Because I think a lot of people, you know, feel that way. We feel identified, you know, there's this book called Do Less, oh, which may be a great thing for everyone to read right now because we're doing a lot less, but it's brilliant. It's called Do Less. Oh, I see a couple of chats. I'll look in a second, you guys, sorry. Um, oh, it's Jeremy being funny. <laughs> um, and she has a question in the book that says, um, or an affirmation or something. And it was like, um, I am not what I do. And I like almost threw the book across the room. Cause I was like, well, then what am I? Like, I was so upset about that. I was like, but, or like, I'm not my, I don't know. I'll, I'll find it. And cause it's brilliant, but it's, it's a really interesting thing to look at. If I'm not doing these things, then what am I? And it's like, you're just a human is the answer, spoiler alert. But you know, you get to decide how you want to spend your time going forward and what lights you up. You know, maybe you haven't spent a lot of time recently on, you know, just what what really brings a smile to your face. And it may be your job and that's fine, but I bet there's other stuff too. You know, so we're giving, we're given this opportunity to see what else is underneath to see what else is in there. Cause we got a lot of goods and we got a lot of layers and humans are simple and complicated at the same time. It's always both. Um, so yeah, we're just in a really cool time, I think. So thank you for sharing. We cut, we went all over the map today and that's, that's how we're feeling. So let's just cover it all. Um, hi Scott, welcome just in time. So uh, we're almost out of time. I'm so sorry. So let's meditate before any time goes away. Everybody knows the drill, get situated. I'm gonna put the tunes on. And I just want to thank you all. People are like onions. They have layers. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just want to thank you all for showing up every day. Um, like Shrek. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Um, I just, I just really, really appreciate you all. This is a magical community and I feel very grateful. So thank you everybody. And by showing up fully, we all help each other. Can you feel it? It's so neat. We are being of service. You're being of service to me. So I'll, there you go. I'll leave you with that. It, it always opens up my, my mind and my heart. And I just really appreciate it. So close your eyes. I'm gonna have to pick a different song because that's not going through. So roll your shoulders down and back, close your eyes, get comfy or lay down up to you. And just take a couple full inhales and exhales. We've done this all together before. So breathing in through the nose, filling your belly up with air, your chest rises. And then when you exhale, your belly contracts and your chest falls. 
So two more breaths, just like that. In through the nose, out of the mouth, filling up, relaxing, relaxing, relaxing. If any part of your body feels a little tight or tense right now, breathe into that space. So just check in with your body from the top of your head all the way down through your face, your neck, your shoulders, your chest, your upper back, middle back, your belly, your lower back, your hips, your thighs, your knees, your calves, down to your ankles, your feet all the way through the tips of your toes and your arms from your shoulders all the way through your fingertips. So just a couple more inhales and exhales. Filling your body up with this breath, with this nourishing energy. This magical connection that we all share. You can lean into that, you can harness that energy. We're all these little twinkling beings made of stardust on this journey and we all happen to land on this planet at the exact same time which would be amazing on its own, but we're also living in this extraordinary opportunity for growth, for presence, for connection, for exploration. So just breathe. And I want you to think about falling into yourself right now. Just going as deep inside as you can. Like you're exploring a cave or a piece of nature or you're out in the galaxy in the cosmos, you're at the bottom of the ocean, whatever your body feels like right now, just explore and go deep and wide and big and beautiful and just see what you see. Every inhale and exhale bringing you deeper and expanding everything. Breathing in, breathing out, relaxing, releasing, expanding, floating or flying. What do you see? What do you feel? What is your heart asking for? What is your soul calling for? Breathe look and listen.
A few more breaths in this space. Are there any messages that came through? Any words? Any thoughts? Any love notes to yourself that you want to hang on to today? Put those in your heart pocket. Thank yourself for showing up today. Thank everybody else for holding such beautiful space. One more inhale all together. And an exhale. Knowing that you can return here whenever you wish. Close your eyes, go inside, and everything you need is right there. One more inhale together. And an exhale. So good, you guys. And gently open your eyes, returning to this space and this moment. Good job, everybody. I know that was short. I'm so sorry. But thank you for this conversation today. And two things just came in for me really quick that I want to share before we leave. One is, <clears throat> thank you for your service to those of you who have been behind the scenes in any capacity or any job you're doing, just being a human right now, you are of service. I know it with all my heart. So all of you, thank you for your service. And I want you to, next time you are having a moment of defiance or resistance or a tantrum or a freak out or whatever because of how things are versus how you want them to be, I want you to act as if you chose this moment, as if you chose the circumstance you're in. Pretend like you actually chose it, like you left your job, you're taking a sabbatical, blah, 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 however you got to look at it and see what that shifts for you inside. See how you can come to a place of empowerment from that place. And it makes the journey to acceptance, I think, a little easier. So it's a fun experiment. Humor me. Give it a shot. Let me know how you feel next week. Um, but that's what I wanted to leave you with today. So as always, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm sending all the love and light I got. And I'll see you Tuesday. <laughs>